Mereka itu katya kau ni, mana? Kau ni ni, ni dek, ni tata way, puta way, aragana gila, rai. Egen cagen cama ya, tu mana kuno? Ahatu ada tak ni mana? Tens of thousands of people are approximated to have gone missing during the armed conflict between Tamil militants and the government of Sri Lanka. And because of the political violence related to the Southern Youth Insurgency between 1987 and 1991. According to the Centre for Policy Alternatives, a total of 43,381 cases were reported to a former Commission of Inquiry in the late 1990s. A more recent Commission of Inquiry, established in 2013, received around 18,100 civilian complaints and over 5,000 cases of missing armed personnel. Vocês <laughs> Kuti cila pada makan, pinjaman mereka berdiri di rumah dal, agak orang mandi mereka, ini aku bandu puri naya, orang mula makan orang orang mandi, mereka berai, kuda bil lagi orang mengkuti cila orang solli, anda ni mudah tu lirun de, nan umur orang nelayan puri ni liya mana, mereka berai berai third ni, mereka berai foto yang kau ni, umi aku berai apa tu nan over muam kencing tu over nalam terdam bodo, ini aku kau jemput single orang dengar, apa ke peran tu pada pelajar ni pada tak kati, ada dalam tu. A critical example of an enforced disappearance that developed into a legal trial was the case of Krishanthi Kumaraswamy. This was a case in 1996, where an 18-year-old student, Krishanthi Kumaraswamy, disappeared after she was raped and murdered by several members of the armed forces on duty at the Chimmani checkpoint. Family and friends who went in search of her were also killed. By 1998, the court sentenced six soldiers and one reserve police officer to death in the Kumaraswamy trial. This case demonstrated the first time members of the armed forces and the police were given maximum sentences for grave human rights violations. In September 2015, the Sri Lankan government proposed the establishment of four mechanisms at the 30th session of the UN Human Rights Council. The mechanisms included an Office on Missing Persons, an Office on Reparations, a Truth, Justice, Reconciliation and Non-Recurrence Commission, and a judicial mechanism comprising a special court and an Office of the Special Counsel. Now, the Office on Missing Persons is a permanent and independent state institution with the task of searching for the truth on the fate of the missing and disappeared in Sri Lanka and protecting the rights and interests of the victims and their families. On 28 February 2018, the OMP were made operational. Sri Lanka ratified the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances in 2016. In 2018, the government made an act to enforce the convention within the legislation of Sri Lanka. The Office on Missing Persons uh, was an institution that was established and it began a lot of important work. Um, I think resources, uh, a new level of commitment and political will needs to be infused so that that particular office can resuscitate and, and begin its work once again because that work is not complete. Uh, that whole operation of tracing the missing was never completed. And that is one thing that needs to happen. The Enforced Disciplines Act has to be understood as not only dealing with the question of non-recurrence, but also dealing with the question of accountability for past violations. In a study published in the International Journal of Humanities and Social Science on the impact of enforced disappearances on women-headed households in the northern province, a mother explained that families of the deceased and families who have a death certificate are entitled to apply for housing schemes and compensations. She said that she and her family are not like these families because she wants to know the truth about her disappeared husband and she wants justice. She also added that they are not in a position to accept her husband's death 
because if they do so, their relatives, the husband's family members and the neighbours would say that she is greedy for free aid. Psychological help, actually there are some few organisations who conduct those things, but government never took it as an issue. Then the compensation actually under Chandrika's government, the commission recommended and they paid rupees 50,000 for a married person who was disappeared, then 25,000 for a youth and 15,000 for the school children who were disappeared. Then after that, uh, they tried to issue the death certificate even in note, in note sometimes by force and they paid nearly about 100,000 rupees if they agreed to take the death certificate. Activities that promote the well-being of affected people include counselling, creating safe social spaces, accompaniment, protecting informed consent, and promoting agency and control over processes by sharing information and advocating for victim and survivor participation. Ensuring protection of those who come forward to tell their stories, either as a family member of the disappeared or as a witness, is also a critical part of protecting their well-being. Mama Liana Bulang, Hamatanata Malewa, Janati Batitama, Tulu, Matia Matigolo, Paksa Vipaksa, Hamakanukota Malewa, Raksakamatian set of our Lua, Golo, Ela Balanam, Karanang, Laman Lipi, Liwa Lipi Lebuna, Yana, the Etamatapilu, Lebuna Misaka, Venedia Kunene, Namuchandrika, Madame Gandu, Paturan Basse, or Mahinda Mahatera Lua, Namute, Andu, Paturan Basse, Balahat Kar and Maki, Apitam, Marnasatika Duna, Moka, the Aurdu Hatak and what a